All right, so I'm going to show you a practical application for the clip curve. It's this one right here. So I got these two forms, and this one rotates into this joint right here. Now the problem is, when I go to rotate it up, it's going to clip into this area, and I need to trim that out. So what I'm going to first do is duplicate these so I don't screw them up. Anytime I'm using these, this type of method I try to duplicate, then I keep my uh, masters at the top and this is my betas. Okay. So in this case I need to rotate this piece and you see I have this little tiny ear mark that indicates where I need to rotate. So here's my rotate feature. This is my transpose. I can just click and drag it down. Since this is a nice flat surface, now the transpose line adheres to that surface. Now, what I'm going to do is just rotate this using the red and rotate it up. I'll rotate it to about right here. And you can see that it needs, it, it clips into that next form right in this area. So what I need to do now is mask off this one, anything that I don't want trimmed. So I go to draw, hold control, click and drag. And I know I, I overly protect things, but I know things go bad. So I just want that one area cleaned up. Now this is a DynaMesh, so it's super smooth. When it comes down to it in the end, uh, right now it's got fauceted information, but trust me, it's got a lot more polys than what it looks like. Here's my clip curve. Clip curve works like this, hold control and shift, and you get this line. The black stuff equals cut from that distance. The clear stuff equals no cut. So what I'm going to do here is kind of look for my area to start. Here's a, a nice way to do this. Turn on transparency. And I'm going to clip from here to here. Just like that. And that gives me my clearance. All right, now I'll just hide this. And if I want to do any surface blending in that area, again, I can use my uh, adaptive. And then I can clear this out. So here's my masking, I can clear. And in order for this to work, I would have to make sure symmetry is off. So. And I think that's it, yep. Mm -hmm. So I just want a slight surface blend right in that area. And then the rest is, I want the organic look. So right there, that's an ugly piece. That's where my trim dynamic comes in. So I can start shaping that out again. I'm holding shift. You can see when I try to smooth that area, it's not going to work. I do have to have to do a surface blend first. and then it smooths out. Well, you have to undo some stuff just to, just because that smooth is so powerful. Okay, again, another case of the trim dynamic here to bring this form down a little bit. 
It's all about form matching, and once you get the forms matched, you can hold shift to smooth them. And it's not really required that I smooth that area out, but yeah. So this is really harsh. Um, that's going to require a little bit of clay. Clay is nice because it has a nice hard edge. Then I'll grab my trim dynamic and start going like this. Then holding shift. Okay. So that's how I'll just progress through this entire part right here, you know, just the same MO, you know, ugly form. The two two forms definitely do not they do need some help. So I'll go like that. Try to bring the two surfaces as close as possible. Holding shift to smooth that out. Smooth this out. And then try to blend these two forms. And sometimes I use just clay build up to uh, get some in the area. If I get too faucetted of information, I hold control, click down. That will rebuild the surface, and now it's a lot better. So you can think of this as like putting Play Doh or putty in a hole. And this is your just scraping tool to scrape the putty out. get those harsh edges out. I do like the harsh edges in the mechanical part, but I don't want them in the organic part. dynamic, scrape out the putty, hold shift to smooth the putty. A little surface blending right there. Sometimes a real quick slash of the mouse is better. Okay, got to rebuild these surfaces. Holding control, I just swash that. A little clay in this area. A little trim dynamic in that area. smooth in this area. Yeah, it should be good. 
Now a lot of this detail stuff isn't, I mean, once I retopologize this piece, it, it's going to be gone anyway. So, not really too concerned with that. Also on the inside is a very mechanical piece. I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see on the inside it's cut away. And I have to preserve that on the inside. And if I don't, um, the joint won't rotate on the uh, upper shoulder. So that's why I'm having to be so super careful because of the underlining form on the inside there. That one's really easy to fix. A little glue right there. Now, is that because of the um, the trim in the area? Mm. Oh, should be good. So now I'll just kind of observe the piece together with the other one. Take off transparency. And you can see they fit very nicely together. Because this one has so much internal workings on it, I do have to treat it a little bit differently um, than most. Usually I will retopo something, but because of the internal nature of this, I'm going to have to smooth it using shift a good tip here if you hold shift and you go to brush and you want to keep the inner workings of something that has a thin wall you go to auto masking and make sure back face is on so that way uh, anything on the inside oops, uh, will not get smoothed you don't smooth out these forms and you go to reduce, uh, it will carry through on your reduce. You don't want to do that. There we go. Any, um, let's say, detail I wanted back, I can use the clay buildup brush. Uh, and I use it very lightly, like a two or a three. And I'll just kind of pump up this form just a little bit in this area hold shift and it just adds the detail back in. So if I find I, I super smooth something too much, um, I can add, always add the detail back in using the clay buildup. Alright, last but not least, you can go to, uh, I would duplicate anything that you are going to totally destroy and go to like Decimation Master, um, go to Preprocess Current. This will protect the inner workings of this piece better than the topology will and allow me to get it over to my other application so I can split it and print it. Okay, so I always see the polyframe on this and then I go to decimation and here I just pick an arbitrary number. I'm going to put like 0.5. That seems to be working very well with this model and I'll decimate current. there we go so now you can see the inner workings of that is preserved quite well and then all this is nice and clipped out and it's ready for um, print so I hope you enjoyed 
All right, just in case it's helpful to see what the piece really is, uh, I'm going to export it out. Uh, this this piece I'm going to get rid of. I'm done with that one. This was the duplicate. I just used that one to rotate it. This one needs to be reduced, but this one uh, can be retopoed because it doesn't have any internal structure. So I'll go down here to uh, geometry, Z mesher, Z remesher. That's why I use ZBrush so much is because now, especially because the 4R6 has that Z remesher in there and it just fixes all the topology. I'd like to keep as much topology as possible. With this piece, I couldn't do that. But with this piece, you can see the advantage is huge. Now I can select those faces uh, anytime I wanted based upon a flat surface in Blender. Okay, so those two forms look good. Um, what I'll do is I'll just take in, let's see, this one and this one. This one I'm just going to go back up with. This one and this one are the two I want. So I'll merge these down. And then just export. I'll separate them in Blender. I put a F to indicate final. So here's what I have right now. Uh, this is my old piece, and you can see the, <laughs> that they're just mechanical forms put together, and it's really ugly. I'll just move that piece over. And you can see this is the part I was talking about. This needs to pivot on the inside of the arm. So I'll import the OBJ, uh, bicep final, and there's my new piece. You can see, compared to the old, how much better that looks. Very action figure-like. Now I'll move this out of the way and then go to this one. I have to reestablish a pivot point here. So I'm going to say the pivot's right there and go object transform origin to 3D cursor and just try that out. Uh, I probably lost my earmark, but this should be should be pretty good. Uh, nice thing is when you go to lock, so I lock these out and lock the rotation so I can only move in that area. Very nice. So he can go clean up here. Good. And just check the other side for any kind of collisions. Very nice. So that is uh, my workflow for blending geometry together like that into a more organic feel for an action figure. If you'll ever do that in life. Enjoy.